Nearly half of Americans are on at least one prescription medication and at least 20% are taking three or more according to the CDC. So, I, you know, most of you guys are, a lot of you are in healthcare and compliance, medication adherence, I think, I, I, I might be speaking out of turn here, and Adam, you'll probably uh, be able to speak to this a little bit more, but uh, it's, I think it's one of the larger costs of readmissions uh, around that or, or big issues. So um, I, he'll probably be able to speak about that a little bit more, but the integration of artificial intelligence into this is, is very, very exciting, and, and, and Adam Hanina, the CEO of AI Cure, um, is, has created something that uh, I think is very interesting, and I hope you agree. Let's welcome him to the stage. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Adam Hanina. Thank you for the uh, introduction. Uh, I'm really grateful to be here. Uh, I'm the CEO of AI Cure, which stands for Artificial Intelligence Cure. And you know, there are a lot of buzzwords going around, but really it's about the link between establishing a technology, the impact of a technology on the behavior of a patient, and then the impact of that behavior on the health outcome. And then seeing what the ROI is. That's what we focus on. The AI meets behavior, meets outcomes, meets, meets ROI. And you know, over the last number of years, AI Cure has really been focused on establishing that link and focused on clinically validating an approach, which is really critical to any form of medicine. So behavior, going to the gym, driving safely, taking your medication, it's a single parameter that can be linked to a massive economic impact and a massive clinical e impact. I have a 30 to $50 million clinical trial that I'm running. I'm looking for a 12 to 15% effect size. I have no idea if my patients are taking the medication in the trial and the behavior drowns out any signal. That leads to 20 to 30% of all clinical trials today failing because subjects are just not following the experiment. It's a huge tragedy. And then in population health, so many people die or are hospitalized every year because of behavior. All this data that we're talking about, it's really about understanding what is going to lead to a clinical outcome or an effect? The economic impact of medication on adherence has been estimated to be between 300 and 600 billion dollars each year. Because it's really important, and I heard some other panelists talk about this, because it's so important to not focus about on the kind of healthy, worried well users, but really go to the source of where economics are most um, interrupted by non-adherence. Um, because it's so important to focus on that, that's exactly where AI Cure has spent most of its attention, where every dose matters. So in the examples of a hepatitis C patient taking every single medication, missing one will require a doubling of therapy. A stroke patient reducing their medication intake will increase the risk of a hospitalization event. And a schizophrenia patient not taking the medication will also lead to a negative health outcome. All of these can be directly linked to negative health outcomes. And it's all around behavior and the ability to capture that behavior, which today, because we don't have sufficient continuity of care, is invisible. For millions of patients, taking medication is vital to staying healthy. Yet half of all patients do not take their medication as prescribed. At AI Cure, we use artificial intelligence on smartphones to visually confirm medication ingestion. We make sure that the right patient is taking the right medication at the right time. Biopharmaceutical companies, providers and payers benefit from new efficiencies and higher quality data, allowing them to focus on those patients at highest risk of poor adherence or hospitalization. By leveraging intelligent technology on devices that people already have, AI Cure has developed a powerful, accurate, and scalable adherence tool. 
The interactive technology can be downloaded as an app onto any mobile device and is designed to adapt to patient behavior over time. The platform can be customized according to disease type, patient demographics and risk factors. Improper use or suspicious activity triggers real-time intervention. The process is entirely software-based, no widgets, no custom hardware, and no change to the manufacturing process. With a portfolio of intellectual property and multiple innovation awards, AI Cure is transforming clinical research and the delivery of care on a global scale. AI Cure. Connecting the world's patients to better treatment and better care. Great. So AI Cure, we believe in a hub and spoke model to behavior modification. If you just rely on self-reported data, A, you're not going to be able to intervene accurately because the data captured through self-report, according to all the academic literature, is unreliable and will not impact behavior. So you have to have an accurate hub. Then you can add the spokes of patient engagement, escalation, intervention, etc. So we've developed a system that has a ton of buzzwords, but our core focus is computer vision neural networks where we have processing both on the local device as well as the server side. So we allow a patient to take their medication even if they're in a concrete box, and yet we can do high level processing on the server side. In fact, we have over 21 patents and we've received over $7 million of funding from the NIH. We're backed by some leading venture capitalists, including the former chief scientific advisor to Bill Gates, because of the impact of this system. And it all boils down to data at the end of the day. The patient engagement systems are the spokes. So what that does is it allows you to interact with different types of patient populations and stratify by risk. You can not only provide reminders and capture adverse events, you can remind patients when to take the medication, how much to take. It's an interactive system which emulates a lot of what a nurse will do with a high touch point solution. And that ability to adapt to different patients kind of um, articulate some of the challenges of behavior modification. Behavior is really complex and you need to look at it from different angles. And that's why artificial intelligence has the ability to be adaptive. But it does boil down to data. Right? If you don't have data, all we're doing then is we're testing out new technologies. It's kind of like testing out new drugs with no data behind the medications. So at AI Cure, we are clinically validating across a whole host of therapeutic areas. When I saw this data, I got really excited because it's a schizophrenia patient population over six months of monitoring with AI Cure's system. And we compared that to patients who were not using AI Cure every day, but had a nurse watch them three times a week, and then they dosed four times a week at home. We then looked at the drug concentration levels in the blood, and we compared the two different groups. And we found that AI Cure outperformed a nurse visiting a patient with schizophrenia three times a week. AI Cure outperformed that by a relative improvement of 25%, according to drug concentration levels. Now, why is that important? It's a six month period. What does this mean? Well, when you look at clinical research, if you have higher drug concentration levels, in the blood of patients, you can make more confident no go or no-go decisions in your phase two trials. And in phase three trials, you can actually shrink the sample size of the patient population, getting new drugs to market more quickly with better data. And in population health, if you know patients are taking the medication and you're actually improving that, you can validate the impact on health outcomes directly as a direct correlation. It all boils down to the data at the end of the day. We're showing that this adaptive technology, this adaptive framework, is working across all types of patient populations. Today, in LA County, we're monitoring patients with active and latent tuberculosis. It's pretty incredible. Patients who don't speak English, never picked up a smartphone, are able to use this interactive platform and get treatment, which really optimizes the therapeutic effect and makes sure, makes sure that they are cured. 
Mental health, cardiovascular, infectious diseases are the three areas, therapeutic areas we're focusing on, but what we're demonstrating is elderly patients, polypharmacy patients, patients with cognitive impairment, very technical literacy levels, any language, and patients who are high risk ultimately can use the platform. And that's important. It's important because at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to quantify the impact of any kind of intervention. But if you can do that, it will allow you to do significant things. AIQ's mission by 2020 is to quantify the number of days that we've accelerated new drugs into the marketplace and quantify the number of hospitalizations that we've prevented. And we can do that. And what that means is if you can scale this platform globally, there are limitless possibilities to impact the patients' lives that we love. Thank you.